Hello, Health 230 students. This is Brian Clark. Today I will be lecturing on the second half of chapter number 19. This is lecture two of two. And I'm primarily going to be talking about diet drug interactions. Diet drug interactions can be thought of as being categorized in two primary categories appetite altering or metab metabolism altering. The appetite altering, that's exactly what it sounds like. Some drugs either increase or decrease appetite. The more common ones decrease appetite. Uh, it's not unusual at all for us to see appetite being suppressed in people who are being treated for uh, things like cancer. Chemotherapies are, are very caustic to the system and they can cause nausea, vomiting, uh, just general gastrointestinal discomfort. And as you can well imagine, when a person is in a situation like that, they don't, they don't want to eat. And there's, there's risk associated with that because when a person is not eat, eating adequately, there is a, a fairly high probability that the person is not going to be getting 100% of the recommended daily allowance for vitamins and minerals and getting an appropriate amount of amino acids. And it's during this time frame when they need those vitamins and minerals and amino acids most. So uh, there has to be some type of medical intervention, whether it be um, simply a person like yourself, a nurse or some type of clinician, interacting with the individual, emphasizing to them that eating during that time frame is important, or whether there be some type of, of medication prescribed to increase appetite. Secondarily, uh, sometimes certain drugs do suppress or, I'm sorry, do increase appetite. Uh, we see those with, we see that happening sometimes with corticosteroids as well as some antidepressants. And there's also risk associated with that because if a person has increased appetite, they are going to be at risk for gaining weight. They're going to be at risk for uh, behaviors that will increase blood glucose, which of course increase risk for diabetes type 2. So um, uh, very distinct risks as it, as it, as it relates to uh, drugs altering appetite. Now secondarily, uh, drugs can affect metabolism. I'm just going to read this verbatim because it's a fairly good definition. Drugs can alter absorption and or excretion of nutrients and food components. Now, that means what you and I eat can alter the absorption, metabolism, or excretion of drugs. So not only can drugs affect metabolism, but um, uh, but um, nutrients can affect the drug as well. Uh, look over table 19-4. You're going to see a fairly comprehensive list of diet drug interactions. Uh, we're, that, that one right there, the um, drug binding, we're going to talk about a little bit more because it's a fairly common one. That's a continuation of chapter, or of table 19-4. Uh, just generally speaking, some of the things that we can see happen, happen with uh, appetite-altering drugs are that they can, as I, as I said, suppress appetite, they can alter taste, cause nausea and vomiting, cause dry mouth, cause lesions in the mouth. We oftentimes see that with cancer drugs. Uh, constipation, which you see with uh, anesthesia, abdominal discomfort and diarrhea, drowsiness. Uh, sometimes we see that in seniors where they're on a multitude of of drugs, some of which cause drowsiness, and literally the, the patients just kind of forget to eat. Uh, next bullet point there, two drugs that you'll need to know, um, Megastrol and Dronabinol. Those are two drugs that are used to increase appetite in AIDS patients as well as cancer patients. Uh, sometimes we see there being a drug nutrient binding effect. Uh, in, in particular, we see that with cholesterol medications sometimes. 
Uh, ideally, what's going on there is that your bile acids are going to bind to the cholesterol, thus reducing the amount that actually makes its way into the circulatory system where it can have a negative effect on the arterial walls. However, what can also happen there is that sometimes the drug can uh, bind with the fat-soluble vitamins and of course if you're not getting your fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A your immune system isn't working properly if you're not getting vitamin D then you're putting yourself at risk of osteopenia osteoporosis so some pretty major uh, potential consequences there uh, second bullet point there some antibiotics bind to calcium and other minerals in food and supplements a good example of that is tetracycline tetracycline is an antibiotic it binds with calcium so uh, say for example a person is taking an antibiotic taking tetracycline for a bacterial infection uh, and they, uh, they 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 take that medication with a glass of milk, a very significant amount of that tetracycline is going to bind with the calcium in that milk, which means that ultimately the antibiotic is not going to be getting into the circulatory system where it can have an effect on the bacteria. Sometimes we see that um, that there's an alteration in acidity in the stomach and that may very well affect absorption and this is most common when a person is taking some type of, of uh, drug for heartburn either an anti-acid anti or a prot proton pump inhibitor and this is in particular dangerous for pregnant women pregnant women oftentimes do suffer from heartburn uh, women pregnant women need very significant amounts of folate which you may very well know better as folic acid uh, folic acid is used by the body to synthesize DNA and, and maybe I should say is used by individual cells to synthesize DNA and with fetal tissue you have massive amounts of of mitosis going on, you know, massive amounts of cellular division so there has to be very large amounts of folate for DNA to be synthesized or copied appropriately and of course if a woman is taking an anti-acid or a proton pump inhibitor to minimize heartburn and she's limiting the amount of folate that she absorbs well there sometimes can be some fairly major consequences to the fetus in that situation several drugs directly impede the absorption of nutrients by interfering with intestinal metabolism or transport into mucosal cells some examples of that trimethoprim and um, pyrimethamine some drugs are going to affect stomach emptying rates and that one's very straightforward if you're eating foods that are very high in fiber uh, th then the gastrointestinal system is going to empty itself more quickly. Basically, food is going to move through the gastrointestinal system more quickly in those types of situations, which can reduce the amount of absorption that will occur. Uh, methotrexate and folate deficiencies. Sometimes methotrexate is used in, in treating cancers. Um, uh, MTX or methotrexate, which is, is oftentimes referred to as MTX, uh, that can cause some pretty, pretty quick and fairly significant folate deficiencies. Uh, it's actually a drug that's used with ectopic pregnancies sometimes. Um, for example, if a woman has an ectopic pregnancy and they, of course, want to abort that pregnancy because there's no way for an ectopic pregnancy to go full term or really you can't even go, you know, the fetus is going to die in very short order. So they try to save the woman's fallopian tube by giving methotrexate. That's going to dramatically reduce the amount of folate that is available to that, that fetal tissue. If uh, DNA synthesis cannot occur, then very quickly that tissue will die. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. <clears throat> uh, corticosteroids, uh, they can um, 
they corticosteroids as well as immunosuppressants they can mimic cortisol and once again can cause an alteration in an appetite which leads to weight gain uh, interestingly uh, even though these drugs can cause uh, increased appetite sometimes people will lose weight because of muscle wasting muscle wasting bone loss hyperglycemia uh, this one is definitely worth taking a moment and talking about. Grapefruit juice has an effect on a very large number of drugs, and uh, it's said to increase the half-life. And another way of saying that is that it causes an amplified effect quickly. So if a person takes a drug with grapefruit, uh, they're going to get a uh, a heightened effect from that drug. However, the duration of the drug effect is going to be shortened. Some herbs may enhance activity of, of warfarin um, and should be avoided. Examples, St. John's, uh, John's wort, garlic, ginseng. I don't even know how to pronounce those last two. Um, haven't heard of them. But what happens sometimes with with herbal remedies is that it potentiates the effect of these these blood thinners. And say, for example, a person's going in for surgery and they have very thin blood because of these herbs that they're taking in in conjunction with their blood thinners. Well, that can very quickly lead to risk of a hemorrhage. So um, it's very important that people stop taking their herbs prior to surgeries because of that risk. Right there in table 19-5, you will see a list of, uh, of grapefruit juice drug interactions, and you'll see that, that the effect is fairly significant, um, as well as the, the list is long. Uh, some, some medications will affect nutrient excretion. Uh, diuretics are going to do, do this. They're going to enhance the excretion of calcium, potassium, magnesium, and thiamine. Um, we, we need very significant amounts of calcium and potassium. Uh, we need calcium and potassium for our muscles to contract. Uh, combinations of, of tyramine as well as uh, MAOs, which those are those are um, psychotic drugs or, or as you see there medications used to treat depression uh, combining those can cause some some pretty major issues and in rare cases can be fatal so should not be taken together uh, it's, it's, it's called the cheese effect um, uh, cheeses are very high in, in tyramine or tyramine alright I'm just about out of time um, I very much appreciate your attention today. Um, good luck studying for the test, and as always, feel free to contact me with questions.